Masses in the eye can cause glaucoma, either tumors or cysts, and we'll go through the mechanisms here. Thankfully, a fairly rare cause of glaucoma. There are a wide variety of tumors that can cause an elevated intraocular pressure in glaucoma. And here's a list, and I hate lists, but unfortunately you need to know that melanoma and lymphoma, metastatic lesions, leukemia, can all cause uh, glaucoma. And in children, more you would see things like retinoblastoma, juvenile xanthogranuloma, and meduloepithelioma. Melanoma is the most common intraocular malignancy, and it's also the malignancy that is most likely to cause glaucoma. One of the ways that tumors can cause glaucoma is by directly invading the trabecular meshwork. And we see this in melanoma of the iris or ciliary body. We can see this in metastatic tumors, leukemia, or juvenile xanthogranuloma. So this is a patient with an iris melanoma that you can see on the left part of this image that has ongonioscopy invaded the trabecular meshwork so that the meshwork is completely packed with melanoma cells. Anytime you see somebody who has a iris tumor or ciliary body tumor and an elevated intraocular pressure, it's a very bad sign that the trabecular meshwork has been invaded. And when you think about the meshwork, it's almost like a lattice where the cells, once they get in there, have a very easy access to grow around and fill the meshwork in a ring like what we see here on the right hand side. So this eye looks normal until the patient looks down. You can see all of this pigment on the episclera and sclera. The eye had a very high intraocular pressure. And on gonioscopy, the trabecular meshwork is completely packed with melanoma cells. And unfortunately, really the only option for this eye was enucleation. One can have posterior pressure closing the angle from behind. This can happen with a very large melanoma of the ciliary body or the choroid or from a retinoblastoma. This is a young patient with a ciliary body melanoma that has broken through into the anterior chamber. You can see that the iris is just pushed out of the way here. It's as though the tumor is not in the iris, but pushing the iris out of the way. And on ultrasound on the right hand side, you can see that this is a very large mass, 11.27 millimeters in its largest dimension. <clears throat> and on histopathology, you can see that it's distorted the lens here and it has actually completely obliterated the iridocorneal angle. The iris is enmeshed in this tumor here. One can also have pigment that's released from the tumor and cells and debris from a necrotic tumor can clog the trabecular meshwork. That can happen with the melanoma of the ciliary body or choroid, in which case it's called melanomolytic glaucoma. One can have pigment-laden macrophages that clog the trabecular meshwork. Retinoblastoma can also shed tumor cells and necrotic debris and cause a, an open angle form of glaucoma. This is a large choroidal melanoma of the type that would be big enough to, sh to become necrotic and shed cells leading to melanomalytic glaucoma. We always talk about this form of glaucoma in lectures and in books and I have to admit that I don't think I've ever seen one. I've seen lots of anterior segment melanomas causing glaucoma, but almost never uh, melanomalytic. These large tumors can cause neovascularization that looks just like neovascularization from other causes, and that's particularly the melanoma, retinoblastoma, meduloepithelioma. One can have hemorrhage from a variety of tumors, but a particularly uh, xanthogranuloma like in this young patient. And one can have uveitis from lymphoma 
or juvenile xanthogranuloma. We treat it by treating the tumor. One needs to consider avoiding filtration surgery in somebody who has an active tumor in the anterior segment. We don't want to take melanoma and spread it into the orbit. Cysts can rarely cause elevated intraocular pressure. Cysts of the pigment epithelium are very, very common. They just cause a fullness in the iris. Then on ultrasound, one can see that these are fluid-filled cysts, such as in this patient here. You can see on gonioscopy in the image on the left, this fullness. The iris structure is completely normal. It just looks like there's something underneath it. And on uh, anterior segment uh, ultrasound, one can see a cyst of the pigment epithelium right here. These are benign. They're very, very common. They can only occasionally cause problems if they get so diffuse and large that they push the iris up over the trabecular meshwork. This is an example of a very large one. You can see it here uh, poking into the pupillary space. And on gonioscopy, it's really closed the angle in this region. And this is anterior segment OCT showing this uh, mass in this area that's just a fluid-filled cyst. They rarely compromise the anterior chamber angle when they grow very large. And if they do, they can be deflated with a laser. This is just an example <clears throat> of someone whose iris pigment epithelial cyst had gotten large enough to cause the angle to be very narrow. And on the right, uh, the appearance after laser iridotomy through and into the cyst. Something that I almost never have had to do. Differentiate this from epithelial inclusion cysts like we see here. This is a patient who had had an express shunt trabeculectomy done and developed this very large epithelial inclusion cyst, one would presume, from the paracentesis. These are typically clear. You can see if we put a slit beam on it, we can see both the front and the back of the slit beam. In this particular cyst, you can see debris within the cyst. It's very important not to rupture these epithelial inclusion cysts because that can release epithelium into the anterior chamber and lead to epithelial downgrowth. So, Melanoma is the most common intraocular tumor. It is also the tumor that's most likely to lead to elevated intraocular pressure. Do not filter an eye with an active intraocular malignancy and treat the underlying tumor. Cysts of the pigment epithelium are very common and very rarely can compromise the iridocorneal angle. They can be ruptured with a laser but do not rupture epithelial inclusion cysts. These need to be surgically drained or killed with um, absolute alcohol or some other way managed so that they don't release epithelium into the eye. So you won't see a lot of people who have glaucoma from tumors. Um, when you do, you really need to work with people who have a lot of experience with intraocular malignancies.